The following program is not intended for preschool age children. Parental discretion is advised. Major funding for Don't Look Now is provided by the Mabel Louise Riley Foundation, a Boston-based foundation with special interest in children and youth. Additional funding is provided by public television stations and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Good morning. This is a happy day for us here at public television. As you can probably tell from the noise in the background, there's a party going on in the executive suite because today is the last episode of that dreadful children's program, Don't Look Now. And we at public television couldn't be happier. But as the saying goes, for every silver lining there's a cloud, and while we celebrate, I'm afraid you have to watch another episode of Don't Look Now. Live from Beantown! Ta-da! Why are we eating off paper plates? Well, you remember last night, dear, when your father finally agreed to do his share of the housework? Yeah, he said he'd do the dishes. Yes, well, he cleared away the dinner dishes and stacked them very neatly in the trash compactor. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a place is this, anyway? There's no salt in the salt shakers, there's no ketchup in the ketchup bottle, and there's no mustard in the mustard jar. I've got news for you. There's no meat in the sausage, either. What's that, then? Don't ask. Hey, shut up, Bonnie. It's the last show already, and we hardly seem to have started. None of my friends know we've even started yet. Then again, I don't think kids watch that much public television. I wonder if anyone watches our show. Well, I heard someone saying last week that they saw this funny program on public television. Oh, I thought, good. hey, we do have a viewer. Yeah. Then I realized they were talking about Julia Child. <laughs> what are we gonna do when it's all over? I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back to staying in bed till lunchtime. I can't wait until this stupid show ends. Then we all get to go to the executive party. What party? The executives are all celebrating. The show's doing that well? No, they're celebrating because this is the last show. And they won't have to put up with us anymore. That's yeah. right. And if you kids could get on with doing the show, I'd be able to make it to the party. Mm. She's right. Let's all get on with the show so we can all go to the party. Okay. Uh, ready? Just a minute, just a minute. I don't think you kids understand. You kids are going nowhere except out that front door in 56 minutes and about 12 seconds. So why don't you go Whoa. ahead and introduce the show? <laughs> Hi, and welcome That's to... That's enough. Let's get on to the next section. Thanks. What? Now, Max, dear, make a wish and blow out all the candles. But don't tell anybody what the wish is or it won't okay. come true. Oh, you're so strong. So handsome. Oh, boy, I wish for a girl like Lisa and I got one. Ah! Where'd she go? Max, dear, I told you not to tell anybody what your wish is. Now you'll have to wait until next year. <laughs> Maybe we can light the candles again. Ha-ha! <laughs> 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 I'm asked me ideas. Tie off the bowling. And you, you walk the plank. But why are you making me walk the plank? Why? Because you're the worst criminal to sail the Spanish main. But, but... Plunder and pillage we can handle. Stealing gold and silver we can forgive. Murdering and burning ships we can let bygones be bygones. But you, you tore the little label off the bottom of your mother's new couch. And that, that is simply unforgivable now. Walk the plank. Go. Samuel gets in your eyes. Lisa, what are you doing in detention this time? It's the stupid pen we have to use in calligraphy class. I can't make it write anything. 
And so I was given detention until I do. Oh, well, I suppose you better get started. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Hey, I bet you couldn't. What was that, Lisa? I said, I bet you couldn't make this stupid pen work. Don't be silly. Bring me that pen. I'll show you. Sure. Now, what shall I write? In class, they make us write our names. Good idea. Miss Edith Pell. Now that you signed my release from detention, may I go, miss? <laughs> yes, I suppose so, Lisa. You know, Lisa, I've learned one very valuable lesson from this. Never sign a document before you've looked it over. <laughs> Lisa! All right, get your little head down in there. This'll just take a second. Hi, what happened to those rattlesnake eggs I left in your fridge? Oh, I think I must have fed them to the camp director. Violet, I told you they were rattlesnake eggs. Don't you remember? Yeah, I remember. That's why I fed them to the camp director. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's contest time. Right. We have a Don't Look Now t-shirt to give away to the first caller who can answer our simple current events question. By now you should know that we get all our questions and answers from last week's news. So if you've been reading the papers, <laughs> this should be a cinch. Right. Question, please. Sure. Here you go. And the question is, last Sunday, terrorists attacked U.S. Marine. In what Mideast city did the attack happen? See, I told you it'd be easy. But now for the hard part. If you know the answer to that question, then you can call the studio. And if you're the first person through with the correct answer, then you get to talk to us on air. Call us at 1-800-932-1007. That's 1, then 800, then 932-1007. But if you live in Massachusetts, it's 617-576-9200. And while you're doing that, we'll watch Banana Rama sing Shy Boy. <laughs> Banana Rama? Rama? Hello? Hello, yes. What's your name? Denise Andrews. Hi. Do you know the answer to our question? Yes. What is it? Beirut. You're, oh, you're right. Oh, congratulations. You know that you just won yourself a Don't Look Now t-shirt? Well, yes. Max wants to speak to you, okay? Okay. Right. Hi, who's this? Hi. Um... Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask you, do you know a lot about computers? Not really. Do you have any computers in your school? No. It's the thing of the 80s. No. <laughs> so I was just wondering. So, you, you, don't, you don't have any computers in your school? No. All right, well, you should see if you can get some because it's a good thing to know. All right? Okay. All right, see you later. Congratulations. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. you are, Lisa. How was summer camp, dear? Oh, it was wonderful. Ooh. I was voted the most popular girl in the whole camp. Oh. Oh, that's nice, dear. Yeah. In fact, I was the only girl in the whole camp. <laughs> you guys sent me to a boy's summer camp. <laughs> what? A boy's what? <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> there wasn't a boy for miles. It was the worst summer I have ever had. <laughs> oh, good. Yes. Good. Hey, Lisa, did you hear that Violet's gonna live forever? That's ridiculous, Baji. Nobody lives forever. I think Violet's gonna have to, because just this morning, I heard her say that before she dies, she's determined to make a meal. that will have every kid here in camp begging for second helping. <laughs> in that case, Violet's gonna have to live forever. <laughs> hey, shut up! Eat. Tomorrow, public television network managers are going to, from all over the country, gather in Illinois to... Hold on. They gather in St. Louis, remember that, Max? To decide right. what TV shows will be seen decide. on the network. Yeah. <laughs> and you can tell them if you want to see more Don't Look Nows just by making a simple phone call, right? Right. Now, we have two 900 numbers and it will cost you 50 cents to call, but it's worth it. To vote yes, I want to see more Don't Look Nows, dial 1-900-720-0077.
and to vote no, no more don't look nows. If that's what you really think, then dial 1-900-720-0070. Now, everyone who calls will get their vote recorded, and with 900 numbers, you will sure to get through. Now, remember, to vote yes, dial 1-900-720-0077, and to vote no, dial 1-900-720-0070. Naturally, we want you to vote yes, and with 900 numbers, you can be sure of getting through. There was these three guys on a deserted island, and they found a bottle, and a genie popped out of it. And um, he said to the first guy, what would, what would you like to be your wish? And he said, I wish I was home with my family. Then the second guy said, I wish I was home with my family, too. And the third guy said, I wish I had my two friends back. What's big and red eats rocks? I don't know. A big red rock either. What is a volcano? I don't know. What is a volcano? It's a mountain with hiccups. What did the Lone Ranger say when he took out, the, uh, took out his trash? I don't know. What did the Lone Ranger say when he took out his trash? To the dump, to the dump, to the dump, dump, dump. I don't think it's fair that they won't let us go to that party. I mean, they're having it because of us. And if it wasn't for us, there wouldn't be a party. Yeah. I mean, if only we could find a way to stay on the air then there wouldn't have anything to celebrate. Right! If we find out what keeps television programs on week after week, month after month, year after year. How? Get a hold of the network computer. It tells the network what to do. I mean, you don't think humans program that stuff they show all the time, do how? you? How are we going to get hold of a network computer? This isn't war games, you know, Baja. This is television. I have a computer. You do? Yeah, how do you think I keep my dating schedule straight? I mean, I can't remember all those names, addresses, and vital statistics. Yeah, but how's a computer that's full of girls? Beautiful girls. Girls, names, and addresses going to help us, Adam. Well, Lisa, how do you think I get those beautiful girls' names, addresses? Sure wasn't your looks, your charms, or your... <laughs> it's easy. See, what I do is I program my computer to call up numbers, and when a beautiful girl answers... And then what does it do? Breathe heavily? <laughs> no, it contacts me, and I make a date. We could do the same until we get a network computer. You think you could do that? Trust me. Oh. Adam, the last time I trusted you, I ended up staying after school so long, they thought I was a new janitor, and they gave me a broom and shovel and told me to sweep the parking lot. Uh, I don't <laughs> think we should trust you. No. <laughs> Max, have you seen your mother? She went out. She went out? Well, that's really too bad. I'm expecting my boss, Jeff, over any minute for dinner. She said something about going to your boss's house to find your dinner. Where have you been, dear? You know how important this evening is for my career prospects. Well, dear, you said you wanted your boss's leftovers for dinner, so I went over to his house to look in his garbage can. Oh, dear. I said I wanted my boss, Jeff, over for dinner, not left. Overs for dinner? Oh, well, he won't be coming now, dear. He drove up while I was emptying his garbage can. You know, he is a very disagreeable man. He says that he wants to see you in the morning. First thing, and not to bother telephoning him tonight. Miss? Yes, what is it, Gulinello? Speak! Uh, miss, do you think that by the time I've grown up, medical science will have discovered a way to make us live till we're 200 years old? Oh, I hope so, Gulinello. Otherwise, I see no hope of your graduating. <laughs> Any luck yet? Nope. I've gotten in touch with the computer that controls Jocelyn's daddy's airline luggage. It's going to bomb the North Pole with 10,000 suitcases. I wonder where all that luggage always got to. Now I know. What else? Strategic Air Commands kept asking me if I wanted to start World War III <laughs> in the school accounting computer. Do you think the principal will get by on a salary of $73 a year? <laughs> well, keep looking for that network. It's got to be there somewhere. Ha-ha! I've asked me, Hargis. Raise the top cell. And you, you walk the flank. Wait a minute. Are you sure this plank is safe? Of course, this plank is safe. I mean, will it break and make me fall in? <laughs> no, it won't break and you won't fall in. Prove it. Prove it. Oh, you kids are a pain, you know it. Get out of my way. 
I'll show you there's nothing to worry about at all. This plank is perfectly safe. King, okay, you pay attention now. Right. Just Swiss. Right, just Swiss. Right, right, right. Ew. Ass. What's Molly doing now? Hey, she's trying to teach that jar full of flies how to speak French. You gotta be kidding. No. You see, the camp director insists on having French flies every day. How's it coming? Not so good. I found out the recipe to McDonald's secret sauce for no network computer. Um, Adam, um, have you come across my school computer by chance? Oh, yeah, a long time ago. Oh, good. Um, could you check my marks for me? Oh, sure. Oh, boy, a D in history. Not very good. Yeah, um, you think you might change that D to an A? You know, like they did in war games? Oh, sure. You just move the cursor to the letter and then type. Oh, no, that's not an A. That's an F. I don't know. I'm just having a little fun. Change it to an A. Okay, okay, jeez. <laughs> What do you mean, oh, no? I think you've got an F in history. What do you mean, change it to an A? I can't. You mean you can't? Your school computer just burped. I think that F's in there forever. Oh, come on, sing. Hey, God. hey, it just goes to show you can't change history. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It's funny! Come on! No, Klaus. In Shakespeare's play, Julius Caesar, what did Caesar say when Brutus stabbed him? Miss, miss, yes, Maximilian, speak. When Brutus stabbed him, Caesar said, telephone you've been on for over two hours. But, Mom, I'm doing my French homework with Chantel. Oh, good, dear. Uh, do I know Chantel? I don't think so. She's my pen pal in Paris, France. Want to say hi to her? Paris, France? Baja, put down that phone. What? Baja, say goodbye to Chantel and put that telephone down. And whatever you do, do not say anything to your father. Au revoir, Chantel, and call you tomorrow. Oh, Mom, this is the wrong stereo again. It doesn't go bash, pal, bang. Oh, I hope this is better, dear. <laughs> that's it, that's it. I found it. Hey, guys, I found it. I oh. found it. What? Did you find the address of the new Miss America? No, I got that weeks ago. I found the network computer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ask it what it thinks of our show. Yeah. All right. Well? Don't look now. It's never heard of us. I should have guessed. Tell it we're on Sunday mornings. That might jog up its memory. Yeah. Yeah. Well? <laughs> I think it knows who we are. Why? Listen. Don't look now. A simple little show, not worthy of notice. Lacking in essential ingredients, <laughs> in a word, boring. Why, that, that, that is so good. Hey, oh. it's not the computer's fault. It's only as good as the person who programs okay. yeah. it. Yeah. Who programs it? Yeah. Who thinks our show is boring? Yeah. Tell us, well, Adam. That narrows the field to a few million people. Adam! <laughs> you are. You are in an audio tape factory, one of the nation's largest. Hey, St. Max, you have a mission to perform should you choose to accept it. Your favorite rock group, 
The police has run out of audio cassettes. The shortage is severe. It's your mission to get cassettes to the group as soon as possible. Hurry, you don't have much time. No, no, Lisa, keep your cap on. When handling tape, you must not get any hairs or dirt on it. Good luck. What looks like a huge roll of shiny brown wrapping paper is actually audio tape before it's sliced in strips. That's what this machine does. The tape material originally was clear like plastic food wrap, but before it arrived here, it was coated with a brown liquid chemical material that has magnetic properties and allows for sound to be recorded. Finally, the one wide roll becomes seven dozen or so thin ones ready to be cut from the machine. What you've got now are rolls called pancakes of audio tape all in a row. These pancakes each contain thousands of feet of tape which will be fed into plastic cassette cases. But first, like any pancakes, they need to be stacked. So hop to it. Empty cassette cases are piled here. Then a pancake is fastened onto the machine. The tape gets threaded and automatically a specified number of feet is loaded into each cassette. Once that's done, it's sent down the conveyor belt to be labeled before it's finally boxed. Tonight, for once, there's good news. Two young, enterprising people have helped put a stop to the street riots that were caused by the devastating cassette shortage. Today, Lisa Rossman and Max Deitch packaged tens of thousands of audio cassettes for that hot rock group called The Police. Nice work, kids. Tomorrow, public television station managers from all over the country will gather in St. Louis to decide what television programs will appear on the network next year. You can tell them if you want to see more Don't Look Nows just by making a simple phone call. We have two 900 numbers. It will cost you 50 cents to make the call, but it's worth it. To vote yes, I want to see more Don't Look Nows, Call 1-900-720-0077. To vote no, no more don't look nows, call 1-900-720-0070. Everyone who calls, their vote will be recorded. But with 900 numbers, every call will get through. This way, you can be sure to get through to us. Now remember, to vote yes, more don't look nows, call 1-900-720-0077. And to vote no, no more don't look nows, Call 1-900-720-0070, but dial that last number only if you want to say no. And with 900 numbers, every call gets through. Hey, Baja. Yeah, Donia? You know the mayor graduated from this very school? No wonder the city's in such bad shape. <laughs> hey, Lisa. Yeah, Max? You think I'd be a good catch? Yes, Max. If I had a mousetrap, you'd make a terrific catch. Oh. <laughs> hey, Adam. Yeah, Max? You play soccer, don't you? Yeah. That's the game where you can use your head, right? That's right. I guess that's because that's the part of you that can be damaged the least. Oh, Adam. You're so strong and so brave and so very attractive. All the girls say so. Really? Yep. Isn't that right, Danielle? No. Danielle? Oh, I mean, yes. You have such courage. Please. Thanks, girls. So we were wondering, why don't you tell the principal that it was you who wrote I Love Adam all over the walls of the girls' bathroom? Come on, you don't think you really believe me, do you? Yes. 
Hey, look, the network computer is doing an update on our show. What's it say? What's it say? Read it. Read it. Mostly boring, except for the only bright spot in an otherwise lackluster cast is a dark, almost handsome Italian boy called Adam. What? Listen, that's what the computer said. Don't blame me. Listen, it's so. updating some more. It said, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> well, I'm a little I'm a little Only a machine. Yeah. yeah. You got a lump right there. Ha, <laughs> 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 ha. me hearties. The sharks are hungry today. So you walk the plank. Oh, come on, Dad. Why can't we have a swimming pool and diving board like Jocelyn does? Oh, you just quit your complaining and get on out there on the plank. Ah. Eat him up, Sharky. And now it's time for another contest. Adam, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be at the computer. Yeah, I know, but the contests are more fun. I know. I want to sit around here all day and watch a TV screen. Wait a minute. I don't think I meant it that way. It's the way it came out. Well, anyway, here's the question. Um, okay. Last night, we all put our clocks back. We used to be on daylight savings time. What is the name given to the time we are on now? And if you know the answer to that question, and you're the first caller through, you win a Don't Look Now t-shirt. Just call us at... 1-800-932-1007. That number again is 1-800-932-1007. But if you live in Massachusetts, then you'll have to call 617-576-9200 because the 800 number doesn't work in Massachusetts. Neat, huh? Not as neat as Rick Springfield singing Human Touch. Hello? Hi. Hi, what's your name? Kelly King. Hi, Kelly. Where are you calling from? Eastern Virginia. Do you know the answer to the question? Yes. What is it? Eastern Standard Time. Congratulations. You just won a Don't Look Now t-shirt. Are you happy? Yes. Adam has a few questions to ask you, okay? Okay. Hello, Kelly. Hi. How are you? Fine. Um, you know how we were having that thing where you phone in and vote yes or no if you want us yes. to stay on the air? Did you call in? Um, no. You didn't? Well, I didn't. You know, no, you, sh you should because, um, because we need to find out how many people like the show and don't like the show. So the, um, so the people that go to Illinois will know how many people like the show. Well, I do like the show. You do? But I haven't called in yet. Oh, well, tell your friends to call in and keep watching, okay? As I was saying... Miss, you, miss! Yes, Gulanella, what does it this time speak? Miss, I was looking out of the window right now, and I saw this... What? You were looking out of the window instead of paying attention to me? Yes, miss, I was looking out of the window, and I saw well, this... Well, Gulanella, you've just earned yourself a detention. If I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times, I will not tolerate inattentive students in my classroom. Miss, I don't know, I was looking out... And... Oh, never mind. It's too late now. You just did it again. You were looking out of the window again, Adam. Isn't one detention enough for you? I'm sorry, miss. I just wanted to see if the guy who was hot wearing your car was still there. But he's driven off now and going very fast. <gasps> oh, my brand new Jaguar XJ60! Pity! If there's anything we can do to improve the program, yeah. it'll probably suggest we end the show right now. <laughs> no, I don't believe it. What? What, what is it, Adam? What See for yourself. This show needs more violence. I do oh, right. oh, it. Hold it. It's doing an update. I, I thought it was too good to be true. No, this show needs much more violence. Oh, of course. You could be like ninjas. Oh, yeah, ready? <laughs> You guys cut it out. No, cut Look, the computer's updating again. Good start, but not violent enough. You need shootings and killings. What? Ho, 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 and a bottle of rum.
around you. Fifteen men are the dead men's chest. <laughs> You're disgusting. How can you captain a pirate ship? You're drunk. You should be brought up on charges of impaired sailing. Drunk? <laughs> I'm not drunk. Every captain pirate drinks and sings. <laughs> it's part of the qualifications for the job. <laughs> oh, yeah? Prove it. Prove it? How would you have me prove it? Walk in a straight line. Straight line? Why, there's no straight line in sight. The plank. The plank's a straight line. I dare you to walk this straight line and prove you're not drunk. The plank? You want me to walk the plank and prove I'm not drunk? I'll walk the plank and prove I'm not drunk. Now get out of my way. See, I'm as sober as a shark is sober. I'm not drunk at all. The computer is right, you know. Almost every show I've ever seen has lots of shootings. Yeah, but how are we going to shoot anybody? We could shoot Bunny. Mm, yeah. No, we need you to time the shows. Besides, if it's going to have shootings and inv involve someone getting hurt, it should involve the boys. <laughs> I'm for equal opportunities in a lot of things. But when it comes to getting shot... Mm -hmm. Right on, sister. Besides, they like guns and things. I know. My little brother once shot a skunk with his pellet gun. Mm. Ah, disgusting. Did he kill it? No, the skunk shot back. Have you ever tried buying 20 gallons of tomato juice on Sunday afternoon? Uh -uh. And I hope I never have to mm -hmm. buy that. <laughs> <laughs> now, you all remember the optional subjects that you signed up for? These are the subjects you've got. Wait a minute. I never put my name down for personal hygiene. This is cheap. I put down for archery and I got knitting. Hey, I've got archery and I want a knitting. Want to trade? Yeah. No, no, no. No trading is allowed. We do the best we can to give you the subjects you've asked for. All right. I sent in for motorbike riding and I got motorbike riding. This is great. Yeah, Just a moment, Maximilian. You asked for motorbike riding and you got motorbike riding? Yep. Boy, oh boy, I'm finally going to enjoy school for once. Oh, yes, the computer's made a mistake. You oh, don't have please. motorbike riding. No, 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 no. Have you have lace embroidery. <laughs> lace embroidery? When will I learn to keep my big mouth shut? Funny, <laughs> 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 we need guns. If you kids are thinking of robbing a bank, I'll tell you right now that public television is not going to like it. No, we need prop guns to use in the program. Yeah. To, you know, make it more violent and more popular, yeah. see? Lisa, this is public television. We do not have prop guns. But we need guns or else our show will get canceled. Yeah. I'll give you the land of some of my shooting irons if you want. You've got guns? Well, sure. Doesn't everybody have guns? No. 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 Well, you got to have guns to keep people from rustling your cattle and your steers. People don't do that kind of thing around here. Hey. Besides, we don't have horses or steers. Well, I'll here. tell you, I've lived around here long enough to know if you did have horses and steers, they'd steal them just like they do the cars and car radios. Okay. You said we could buy your guns? Yeah. Sure. I'll go get them for you right just now. one moment, please. You cannot give these children guns. No. Why not? Yeah. They're Americans, aren't they? Yeah. Doesn't the Constitution of the American States guarantee every citizen the right to arm back? Yeah. I no. mean, uh, have their arms. Uh, I mean, no, no, wait a minute. Would you, you know what I mean? Have you... asked me, Archies. <laughs> Blow the man down. And you, you little fellow, you walk the plank. But I'm too young to die. <laughs> That's right. You do look a little young, don't you? Yeah. So we'll just have us a seat and wait five more minutes and then you'll walk the plank <laughs> tick tock tick tock tick every week we go out and get your opinion because we think it's important this week we asked some kids how they would change their school if they could i'd make the only school for three days a week and only two periods a day and cut it as much as, cut out work as much as I could, and no homework and different teachers. 
get better lunches. What kind of lunch? Pizza and subs and stuff like that. If you could change the school, how would you change it? Um, I'd put more discipline into it and have more people come to the office and get more, lay down more rules and be a little stricter than the principal already is. Well, first of all, I'd let make my principal change his ties. I, they're kind of flashy. <laughs> make it a restaurant, better food downstairs. <laughs> What's the food like now? Gross. I would change my school by making the, the, the days shorter and I'd have maybe um, about seven or eight classes a day and make the teachers um, harder on the kids so that they could learn more instead of the kids fooling around but also have more fun in the school. I'd make you go in later and get out earlier. Probably um, paint it over because it's ugly color. If you could change your school in a few ways, how would you do it? Well, I'd uh, set away some money instead of for gym equipment. I'd buy a few computers for the school and I'd improve the things they have to do with. Instead, of, they have a lot of programs for people who aren't accomplishing as good. I have more programs for people who are over accomplishing the normal school standards. Change the school lunch and make recesses longer. What would you like for lunch? Pizza. While the boys play computer games, we're going to play another kind of game. Right, it's contest time. If you can give us the answer to our current events question, then you can win a Don't Look Now t-shirt. Right. And the question is, what state is St. Lu Louis in? Right? Mm -hmm. Adam and Max does not know this, okay? If you know the answer to that question, then call us here at 1-800-932-1007. That's 1-800-932-1007. But if you live in Massachusetts, then you have to call 617-576-9200 because the 800 number doesn't work in Massachusetts. Now, while you're doing all that phoning, we're going to do a lot of listening. And looking. Right. We're going to watch Stevie Wonder sing, Do I Do. Do you? Do I what? Hello? Hello? What's your name? Do you know the answer to our question? Yes. Yeah. What is it? <laughs> Missouri. Right, you got it. Hear that, Max and Adam? It's Missouri. <laughs> okay, no, if you don't know that. Want to speak to Lisa? Oh, great. You got a Don't Look Now t-shirt. <laughs> Hello? Have you called the 900 number yet? Hello? No. You have? Have you called the 900 number yet? No? no. Well, it's really important that you do because we want to know your opinion about the show, okay? Are your parents watching the show? Are your parents... They are? What do they think of it? What, what did you say? What do they think of the show? They like it. They do? That's good. Do your friends? Yes. They do? What do they like most about it? The kids? Good, because I'm one of the kids, okay? <laughs> great. All right, thanks a lot for watching, okay? And keep on calling. Bye. She won. That's great. I know. <laughs> hey, what's going on here? Ah, uh, Adam, there you are. You're about to learn the fine art of babysitting here at Faulkner Hospital. Babysitting? That's for girls. Don't be sexist, Adam. Well, anyway, you got the wrong guy. Little kids hate me. Parents would pay me not to babysit. Now, Adam, you sound like a perfect candidate for what I've got here. Why not go in and join the rest of the class? Class? What's this guy talking about? To save yourself having to wash the kitchen floor or really clean up a mess, once a child really starts throwing stuff around, you can pretty well determine that they're finished eating, they've eaten enough, and then they just really want to play. Adam, point, your instructor for this babysitting class is Judy Chevalli. She's an expert on the do's and don'ts of babysitting. I know the basic don't. Don't babysit. Now, now, Adam, listen up. If 
you've got dinner on the table and the children really don't want to eat, they may just be shy or upset because the parents are there. Don't make a big deal. Try to get them to eat, but if they don't eat everything, one meal isn't going to really hurt them. This is where you'll get some good hands-on experience, Adam, in the diapering class. I smell trouble here. Better than smelling a dirty diaper, my okay, young so whippersnapper. You Got to make it as tight as possible, because if you don't, you might have stuff dripping out. Make sure your fingers are between you, the diaper, and the baby. You don't want to stab the baby. OK, Adam, you can try it now. Good luck. That goes on top. Yep. All right, now do the other side. Good. OK. Not bad for a first try. And now, it's quiz time. Uh-oh. Well, Adam, just a few pointers. When you babysit, always know the escape route from the children's rooms in case of fire. Keep the doors locked and don't open them to strangers. And most of all, never leave a child alone in the house. Got it? Got it. Oh, no. This looks like a house. A house with little kids in it. How observant. You're here to put what you've learned into practice. I am? Oh, no problem. We did it, yeah. Ooh, there's one there. I got a good idea. You be the alligator doctor, and I'll be the moose cashier. All right, you can be the moose doctor, and I'll be the alligator cashier. everything go? Pretty well. Did the baby eat his lunch? He kind of ended up wearing it. Did he take his nap? Eventually. That babysitting course certainly was a good thing for you, wasn't it, dear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, son. How much does it cost to raise a kid these days? Well, son, figures vary. Some people say it costs $50,000. Others say it costs as much as a quarter of a million. Either way, it's a lot of money, isn't it? Yes, it's a lot of money. So, an extra dollar a week wouldn't matter that much, would it? Um, son, how are you doing on your geometry grades this semester? Oh, no, 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 no. Do, do. Hey, cut that out. You and you, it's your turn to do the dishes. Well, we can't. That's right. Why not? Well, just this morning, the camp director told us that we weren't allowed to play near the water anymore. And doing dishes means playing near the water. So that's oh, right. You're right. You're right. But what the camp director also said was that you couldn't play near the water unless you had your life jackets on. So put these on and go and do the dishes. Go on. Hey, what are you girls doing with all these guns? Yeah, I didn't know girls were interested in guns. I don't know. My sister shot a skunk once with a pellet gun, and the skunk shot back. Have you ever tried to buy 20 gallons of tomato juice on a Sunday morning? Hey, that sounds familiar. Yeah, but these guns are for you two, so we can get some violence on this program and make sure we get to make some more programs. What are we supposed to do, shoot each other? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What? what? Now, come on, there's not much time before the program ends. We've got to get some violence. Adam, just come on, okay? Quit complaining. I'm not so sure about this, Lisa. Didn't gunfights go out with the OK Corral? That doesn't matter. Danielle, you help Max put on his guns. Lisa, okay. this is stupid. Just hold still. Help me with this stuff, Adam. Max, listen, you'll never him. beat him at that draw if you don't put these things on, right? Uh, but I don't want to draw, Daniel. What? You want to get shot? Don't be silly. He's a look up. He's a pushover. Okay, Adam. Now, go get him, right? Now, when I count to three, you draw. But Lisa! One. 
But Lisa! Two. Stop! Bajie, you spoiled it! Now I'm going to have to start counting the three all over again. No, you can't. I can so count the three. Listen. <laughs> One. Um, no, Lisa, you can't do this because we shouldn't have violence on the show. What do you mean? That's what the computer said. You read it yourself, Baja. But that was the wrong computer. Wrong computer. No, yeah, it was the commercial network computer. Oh. No wonder they wanted so much violence. That's mostly what they play on commercial television. You mean, we, don't, we don't have to shoot each other? No. 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 We could have hurt each other. It's not real, boss. It's a propman on a ladder dropping stuff. <laughs> is, it, is it anything we see on TV real anymore? No. In that case, are we real? Ha ha! Ha ha! me hearties! Hang on by the arms! And you, you walk the plank. Wait! The letter's just arrived! My ransom's been paid! My ransom's been Not paid! Not so fast! Let me see. Well, look at this! It's a letter from Blackbeard himself, the leader of the pirate fleet. I'm saved! I'm saved! I'm well, saved. it says here I'm to let you go. So... <laughs> off you go. <laughs> Sharky's love that one. Violet. Oh, yeah, what do you want now? This oatmeal's got lumps in it. So what? All oatmeal's got lumps in it. Yeah, but these lumps are swimming around. Oh, shut up and eat. Oh, wow. Look at that one go. I want him in the races next week. Fantastic. Hmm. My, how interesting. There's this story in the newspaper about a man who spent all his time with his nose buried in his paper. And his family took off and left home, and he never even noticed. Hmm. I say there's this story in the newspaper about a man whose family left him, and he never even noticed. I... Uh, Louise? I wonder if we'll ever get another show. Oh, no. <laughs> I doubt it. We've wasted so much time on this show being violent for the wrong network computer. Sorry. It's not your fault, Adam. <laughs> we all messed up. If you like the show, write us and tell us. And if you didn't like the show, write us still so we can get some ideas on how to make the show better. Good idea, Max. Write us at Don't Look Now, 125 Western Avenue, Boston, Massachusetts, 02134. Oh, hello. Mail already? Oh, no, here. Max, but as long as I'm here, I don't mind telling you what I think is wrong with this show. Um, Later, it, buddy. Um, it, buddy, it. what's that piece of paper? Yeah. Nothing much, just a bill. Mm -hmm. no. What? Yes. Oh, oh, no. oh, no. oh, what is it for this time? Yeah. $4,583. What? Oh, no, 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 that's, that's, uh, that's not that. Hold on, how are you? It's yours. It's for that hole you made in the ceiling. Plaster is expensive nowadays, you know, so you better fork over the money. But, but it's not coming out of my pocket. Oh, 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 If this show comes back, don't blame me. Hey, how come that guy didn't get yellow yuck? Yeah. Oh. It's a technical trick, Max. You wouldn't understand. Try us. Well, look, it only works in this studio and only when we're on the air. And since this is the last show we're doing, nobody's going to be yellow yucked again.
You don't think we're going to make any more of these? Oh, Lisa, I hope not. Woo. Forget about that. How, how come Yellow Yuck only works in this studio? It's a technical trick, dear, and luckily it only works in the studio. Can you imagine what it would be like if it worked out on the street? I mean, every time somebody said, don't play me, they'd... Get Yellow Yuck! Major funding for Don't Look Now was provided by the Mabel Louise Riley Foundation, a Boston-based foundation with special interest in children and youth. Additional funding was provided by public television stations and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. <whistles> <whistles>